Hello everyone, welcome back to another Houdini adventure. Today we take a look at a bottomless porter filter coffee simulation. Uh, the bottomless porter filter is a piece of equipment that helps in diagnosing espresso extraction issues. So the spouts are removed and the basket is exposed so it's allowing you to watch the entire extraction process. And that process always looked very appealing to me. So here we are in Houdini trying to replicate this behavior. So inside Houdini we have a few geometry container, one containing our porter filter, the handle, the cup, the machine and finally our particle fluid. These are all our elements which are getting rendered and also we have our emitter, custom velocity and dot network for the flip fluid simulation. First uh, I imported my porter filter model. Um, I separated the filter and the handle. The handle is just for rendering, but our filter we really want to use as our collision geometry. And you can see that it already got these really accurate small holes in here, like the real one. In order to use it, we want to extrude it because we need the volume as our collision geometry. We do the same for the cup and now we have our both collision geometries ready to go. So let's dive into the emitter. For that I object merged my filter in here because I want my emitter to base on the filter position. I, you can then just use the bound node, set it to sphere and play with the lower and upper padding to create a emitter wherever your filter is. Then I converted it and uh, use the mountain to uh, give it a little bit of noise. You can see that it's now really thin. Uh, that's because we filter the coffee and there is not a lot of coffee um, being, being there every frame. It's more like these small layers of coffee are being added to our simulation. And so we don't have such a dense uh, dense liquid. Uh, we use the flip dop source uh, to create our particles and I uh, deleted the expression from our voxel size and then just set it myself because it's so thin it's better to uh, make it a bit smaller so we don't get any holes in here. Alright so then I used my uh, a disk and with a random attribute and then you can set a color. Then an attribute transfer it onto my particles. So the first thing I tried was to then create my DOP network. Um, so I didn't have my custom velocity yet. I didn't have my pop track yet. First I wanted to really see, okay, what does my emitter do and how is my um, collision geometry doing. Um, before I simulate I always go onto my collision geometry and then just uh, go to the collision tab and under volume uh, take a look at the collision guide. Because we have such a fine holes and uh, a lot of detail we want our collision geometry, our collision volume to really represent our geometry here. So when I imported it, it looked something like this. And you can see that it's not really representing our geometry really well. So you have to go with the really low division size in order to make the collider more accurate. All right, so always need to turn off the collision guide, otherwise it's, it's quite heavy. Uh, I did the same for the cup and then just checked if uh, my collision volume has the right size to represent my collider. Uh, I also have then my source in here and for my source I just wanted it to emit on every second frame. It's the same thing why I made the emitter so thin so we have this more like filtering effect and we don't add more dense more more liquid coffee to the um, simulation uh, every frame and there's another condition I just wanted it to simulate or to emit 450 frames. 
So with that setup, uh, let's I, I quickly simulate it just a few frames just to show you how it looks like. And you can see that it's just like really liquid water just draining through the filter and um, well, we can see from here that our collision geometry is actually working, which is great. Um, but then there's just not a lot, of, a lot to it. But let's let's make a few adjustments. On the flip fluid object, you can find a physical tab, and in here I use the density of 0 0.95 and a really low viscosity. On the flip solver. I made a time scale from 0 0.5 and uppered my substeps. Then under the uh, volume motion, I used a little bit of velocity smoothing because we have actually a really smooth um, a smooth motion. And uh, I turned on the viscosity and also added a little bit of surface tension to it. Then under the collision tab, I used the velocity scale and turned it way down because otherwise it's creating some sort of splashes when colliding and I don't want that. I want to have really smooth motion in here. And um, these values I set in here might not work for you. It's depending on the scale and everything on your emitter, but uh, it might give you a little hint on where to look on which attributes can really affect your the look and the feel of your liquids. And for me, I think the most important things were the surface tension, the density and viscosity. When you play around with those three, you usually get somewhere. And then obviously uh, you add some more like the lower vis velocity scale on the collision tab. Um, and especially for the Sub uh, surface tension you sometimes just need to upper your sub steps now after making a few adjustments you can see that we have a way uh, better behavior already and this is all without the custom velocity on the pop drag so now these these droplets are being created all we want now is that those are going into the middle and then joining for this middle stream. To do so, I think it needs a little bit of help. So we created a custom velocity field, which is just bringing all these droplets to the middle. So on the outer edge of the filter, it needs to be stronger and then it's getting weaker on go when it's go going to the inside. So let's take a look on how we do this. So first we just draw a curve. And resample it. And now with the polyframe node you can set under the tangent name you can set it to normal. And now your normals are running along your curve to the outside. But then we want to make them run to the inside so we can just reverse it and then copy it around. So now we have a curve going from our ed the edge of our filter to the inside and they should transport the, um, the liquid in to the middle stream. So we transformed it and use the pop drop. Here we added a little bit of distortion noise and also created um, a little fall off. So on the outer edge, it's stronger and it's getting weaker once it's going to the inside of the circle. You can do so if you calculate the distance between your points and the origin. And the higher, the more it's away, the farther it's away the point, the, uh, it, the higher the value is. And I exported this as my distance attribute. And I also used it to just multiply it with my um, uh, right now existing normal. And I plugged it into the normal and also into the velocity. Because the normal is just for representation reasons. We actually want to drive our velocity with it. Then we create a bounding box and 
uh, VDB node. VDB is called val with a vector float and you can set a voxel size. Now we want a VDB activate and use the reference reference which is using our second input the bound and now you can see that we have the volume in our bounding box and to now store the velocity attribute from our points inside of our volume we use a volume vob and we can simply go with the second input as a file and create a pc open then use our voxel position and filter the velocity attribute and then store it in our velocity, in our well volume. And that way, with the volume trail, we can now visualize that we have these lines going inwards. And now those should transport our... Maybe we can look at the final result. Okay, so it looks something like this. Now you can see that our custom velocity is actually transporting our, our liquid into this middle stream. For my taste, this middle stream was a little bit too thick. So I just created a lattice and shrunk it down a little bit and then meshed my particles with the VTB from particle, used the reshape SDF to close it, smooth it, convert it to polygons and just smooth it one more time. And later from my particles, I wanted to attribute transfer the color and the velocity onto my mesh again, because those informations got lost while meshing. And this is my out coffee simulation.